Thanks for dropping in, and welcome to the news. Our top story, after a two-year stalemate, the siege of Syracuse may be reaching its final stages, but at a price. The great inventor and mathematician Archimedes is dead. Best known for his war machines, screw pumps and levers, he once remarked, give me a place to stand and I will move the earth. It was, in fact, his innovative defenses that have kept the Romans at bay, and many of these works remain little understood, making his loss incalculable. There had been a standing order that he was to be taken alive, and details remain sketchy at this time. One soldier, on condition of anonymity, has suggested that he may have been killed by soldiers who mistook his scientific instruments for treasure. Back in Rome, the Senate has ordered an inquiry into the matter. One of the most famous Christian relics, the back of the head of John the Baptist was recently brought to the fair city of Amiens from one of the largest and most beautiful cities in the world, Constantinople. A Wallon de Sarton bequeathed it on his return from the Fourth Crusade, and city officials have already begun discussions on the construction of a great cathedral in which to house it. As history has told us, John the Baptist was martyred at Macheris, but his head was buried in Jerusalem and it was found there in the 4th century, eventually making its way to the Eastern Roman capital of Constantinople. Interestingly, it's not the only holy relic to have made its way west with the Crusaders. During the sacking of the city, which I don't recall being a goal of the Crusades, hundreds of items were taken from their churches, including the Virgin's hair and robe, two large pieces of the True Cross, pieces of the Apostles Bartholomew, Simon, Thomas, and Paul, and the finger of St. Nicholas. The bad news is that somehow, in all the commotion, the front portion of John the Baptist's head was left behind. The trial has ended in the case of murdered five-year-old Jean Martin with a conviction. The defendant showed no remorse as the sentence was read, and she is to be hanged and strangled on a gibbet of wood near to the gallow by the master of high works on the morrow. Pig was convicted of entering a house and disfiguring the child's face, whereupon the child departed this life. She and her six piglets were discovered at the scene, and although also charged, the piglets' counsel has won them an acquittal on account of their youth and their mother's bad example. Bad boy of the art world, Caravaggio is back in the news today. Known equally well for both his unusual painting style and his legendary brawling, word has reached us that he is recovering from an apparent attempt on his life in Naples. Once the darling of Rome, he has become a fugitive from every city he has visited, with charges ranging from disorderly conduct to murder. And yet at the same time, he continues to produce dazzling works and receives commissions wherever he goes. In art, his propensity to break the rules has given the world paintings with a realism and drama never before seen. But in life, it may have led to this attack. In my opinion, given time, this man could single-handedly create a revolution in the art world, if he doesn't die or go to prison first. And finally, just this morning in Harrison, Arkansas, the People's State Bank was robbed of almost $6,000. What makes this story so remarkable is that the thieves did not arrive or escape on horseback. They used an automobile. Their leader, Henry Starr, was shot in the back and apprehended while his three accomplices made a daring getaway. According to the sheriff, Henry Starr, a nephew of the infamous Bell Star, has been robbing banks for over 30 years, including the daring double bank robbery of 1915. And he's been in and out of prison a half dozen times or more, on one occasion being pardoned by President Theodore Roosevelt himself. He's even starred in several successful silent films about his exploits. At this time, he remains in critical condition, but he was well enough to tell the doctors that he's robbed more banks than any man in America. And that's today's look at History's Headlines.